It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you very much, Speaker. This morning, my first question goes to the Premier. After weeks of avoiding media questions, the Premier finally took some yesterday, but he seemed unwilling or unable to answer basic questions about his failure to listen to what parents, students, teachers and school boards told him in his government's own consultations. Instead, he lashed out at teachers, calling them greedy oh. and claiming they were holding us hostage, yeah. and went on to make Order. a whole series of wild accusations against the people who educate our kids. The Premier claims he wants to uh, reach a deal with teachers. What serious Premier behaves this way when he's serious about reaching a deal? Premier. Well, through, through you, Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to correct the Leader of the Opposition. I've never called the teachers greedy. Uh, I've called the head of the unions greedy, but not the teachers, because I appreciate the job that the teachers do. Here, here. And they go in and work hard day in and day out. And when, when I speak to the teachers, uh, Mr. Speaker, what I'm hearing is they're, they're fed up with this. They want to get back in the classroom and do the job that they enjoy doing and they love doing, and that's teaching the, the students. But we also have to have fiscal restraint. Uh, the, the head of the unions, they want the 1%, the which is about $920 uh, a year. And I'm sorry, uh, we, we're proposing $920 a year. The unions want $1,840 a year, Mr. Speaker. That's unacceptable. We have to make sure that we're within reason, and we have a great deal, and the ministers put great Response. deals on the table, right. and, and we're going to continue uh, negotiating in good faith. Here, here. A supplementary question. Well, Speaker, leadership means actually working with people even when you don't agree with them. The Premier seems to think— the Premier seemed to think it means avoiding blame. Yesterday, he blamed the media for asking the wrong questions. He blamed teachers for not craving, uh, carving in, caving in to his classroom cuts. He blamed everyone but himself for the crisis that he has created in our education system and in our schools. Does the Premier think anything at all that he said yesterday will bring Ontario, and Ontario families closer to the deal they want to see between the government and the people who make our schools work? The Premier. Good for you, Mr. Speaker. Again, our minister is working day in and day out to get a deal, a fair deal for the teachers, a fair deal for the students and, and the taxpayers, uh, Mr. Speaker, and we're going to continue working hard day in and day out to get the kids back in the classroom. But, Mr. Speaker, um, we committed to a deal that's protecting full-day kindergarten, ensuring teachers are hired based on merit, making sure we maintain the smallest class sizes in Canada for the earliest years. We were able on, on online learning. We went from four down to two. We are negotiating in good faith. Our minister is negotiating in good faith, and we're going to continue Order. working hard to get the kids back in the classroom. Mr. Speaker. The final supplementary. Well, Speaker, the Ford government, in fact, the Premier himself, keeps claiming that they want to negotiate a deal with teachers in the classroom, but the Premier called them greedy hostage takers yesterday. He claims parents and students support his classroom cuts, but he's Order. been hiding a report that shows that they begged him not to make those cuts. He wants to be a leader, but he's showing the worst kind of Order. leadership. Kids deserve better, Speaker. Will the Premier stop name-calling, stop pointing? to imaginary supporters, cancel the cuts, and work with teachers to get a deal that actually improves education in our schools. I ask the members to please take their seats. Order. Opposition, come to order. Government to reply. Government House Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, we're all proud on this side, and Conservatives on both sides of the House, we're all proud of the work that this Premier has done to improve the education system in the province of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition suggested that we can do better. Well, of course we can do better. That's what we're sent here to do each and every day, do better. That's what opposition we're trying come to do. It's an agenda of uh, progress, growth and prosperity. Progress on math and sciences, growth so that our kids can benefit from those, uh, those changes that we made, and prosperity that comes when our kids have the best education possible, Mr. Speaker. That's what we're trying to do, and we can only do that if our union partners work with us and do what teachers are telling them. Order. Teachers want to get back 
into the classroom. Parents want their kids back into the classroom, and if the opposition won't help us do it, parents can rest assured that we will ensure that that happens. Thank you. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Okay. So we're basically five minutes into question period, and there's a lot of energy in the House. And I'm hearing on both sides of the House quite a number of members who are yelling at each other across the floor. And they don't have the floor, they're just yelling across the floor. So I'm going to start calling you out individually if you continue to do that. And then, of course, if necessary, warning you. And then, if necessary, naming you. So we're going to have a civil question period for the remainder of the next 40, 55 minutes. That's my hope. <laughs> start the clock. The next question, the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, speaker, my next question is also to the Premier. As concern about the novel coronavirus spreads all over the world, Ontario's public health officials are doing an extraordinary job keeping people informed and safe. They have a consistent message for people when they fall ill, stay home. Unfortunately, in Ontario, government changes to employment standards make it harder than ever for working people to do that when they need to. What is the government's plan to ensure that people are able to stay home when they need to? Questions address the Premier. Mr. Speaker, we had a, a great announcement yesterday about having a central command table. The uh, Minister of Health is working hard, getting briefed every day. I just ended up getting briefed again uh, this morning. Uh, we have all the confidence in, in Dr. Williams, Chief Medical Officer of Health. They're communicating right across the province with other Chief Medical Officers of Health. We're going to be uh, do, do our due diligence, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that people in Ontario are safe. A supplementary question. Well, Speaker, just last month, 175 health workers, including physicians, nurses, and public health professionals, wrote the Ford government and implored them to reinstate flexible personal emergency leave days and end and, and mandatory sick notes. They've warned the current provincial labour laws are, quote, a serious threat to the health and safety of Ontarians. Yesterday, the Premier said he was taking the threat posed by the coronavirus seriously. I think he's just repeated that by pointing to the, uh, uh, the command centre that's been set up. So my question is, will he listen to the concerns raised by these health, health professionals and deal with the sick note and flexible days off, sick days off for workers in Ontario? Minister of Long-Term Care to reply on behalf of Thank you, Speaker, and thank you uh, to the member opposite. I want to first thank all the people who are working in health care, providing frontline care, our public health agencies who are working so hard every day to be prepared in an instance like this. And I want to make sure that we value what they do. And that's what we're doing. Our government is committed to making sure that we support our, our communities, our population across Ontario, and our frontline workers. And we've added three new types of leave to the Employment Standards Act. Sick leave, family responsibility leave, bereavement leave, and medical notes are not automatically required for those leaves of that absence. Instead, employers have the option to re require reasonable proof of the circumstances that entitle the employee to leave. And although the risk to Ontarians, I think this is a really important emphasis, Spons. although the risk to Ontarians is low, it is important that we take decisive action and take leadership. And that's what this government is doing in this preparedness process. We are supporting our frontline workers. We are committed to making sure our Ontarians have a proper plan to stay safe. And Thank you. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, the government says that they are taking the threat of the coronavirus seriously, and health professionals are saying that Ontario's current laws encourage people to go to work sick, putting themselves and all of us at risk. There's no better way to value the professionals that the minister was talking about than taking their advice, Speaker. New Democrats are ready to work with the government to ensure expedited passage of legislation to enact flexible personal emergency leave days and, and an end to mandatory sick leave. Even if it's on a temporary basis, we can pass legislation in this House in one day. Will the government consider this, Speaker? Once again, the Minister of Long-Term Care. Thank you again, Speaker, and again, thank you for that question. I'm going to reiterate the importance of what our government do, is doing to show support for our frontline supporters, frontline support workers, and our communities across Ontario. So I'm a little disappointed 
that the NDP is trying to play politics. I was a family doctor for almost Order. 30 years, and so I understand the importance of support for our frontline providers. Absolutely. <laughs> And everyone should take comfort in knowing that our skilled health care providers are bringing all their experience and our government is supporting them and committed to supporting them every day that they provide that frontline service to our communities across Ontario and our people of Ontario that we are making sure we have support for and are prepared for. And Minister Elliott is doing an amazing Minister Response. of Health is doing an amazing job across across Ontario preparing with her leadership, with this government, I want our frontline support, front support work. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday was the first time in a while that this Premier has made himself available to publicly answer questions about the state of things in Ontario, and it was fascinating to watch his unhappy and unhinged answers about license plates. This Premier can frame this fiasco however he wants, but the truth is it took almost two weeks for this government to take meaningful action to correct the glaring safety issue of unreadable license plates. If the government's approach to license plates is any indication, how on earth can this province have faith in their plans for education, health care, legal aid, clean drinking water, transportation, housing, energy, social services, or the environment? It's just the latest mess. Buck of beer isn't a thing. Gas pump stickers didn't stick. And the province has lost money selling weed, and the hits just keep coming. <laughs> With such a spectacular track record, we all should have seen this coming, even without fancy scanning technology. Question. How can the people of Ontario have faith in this government? Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you very much, Speaker, because the, uh, it's an easy for answer Essex, for come the to order. opposite. Premier, Ontarians come to order. can have faith in this government because we're demonstrating we're listening. For Essex, we're come not to order. only listening, we're understanding their concerns and we're taking action. And I can't stress enough, Speaker, that the narrative that the member opposite and her entire party is trying to create is getting very old because Ontarians know that we're out there working for them. And in terms of the license plates, a solution has been impl implemented together with our vendor, which is going to see a replacement plan rollout. I am very proud of the people who have worked around the clock to demonstrate that we've taken Ontarians' concerns very seriously. And at the end of the day, Speaker, we heard concerns, we understood, we've taken action, Response. and Ontarians are going to be pleased with the outcome. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Thank you. Uh, my question is again to the Premier. Ontarians still want answers about license plates, whether this government is happy about that or not. First, they buried their heads in the sand, then they admitted there was a problem, and now they're trying to bury the problem again. This government wants this to go away so badly that now they've signed a non-disclosure agreement with 3M, so no one will ever know the cost or what was or wasn't involved in supposed testing or any other details of this botched job. I would bet that the deal that they made for these plates wouldn't hold up to scrutiny, and that's why they want it to disappear, not unlike their branded plates. The Premier seems angry that people would dare to question him. He says there will be no cost to the taxpayer. Really? I would say prove it, but you can't. So my question is, whose brave idea was it to hide behind a non-disclosure agreement, and why won't you let Ontario see this contract? I would remind members to make their comments to the chair. Minister to reply. Thank you very much. I think what we've just seen here in this House today, Speaker, is a very clear misunderstanding of what business is really all about. The NDP party do not respect Order. commercially sensitive information. Order. And the fact of the matter is, what really matters to Ontarians is that we're a government that listens, we've taken action, and we're ensuring that the new place that roll out will be based on the feedback that we've been receiving from our stakeholders. I, I've been meeting and speaking with stakeholders nonstop, Speaker, and I really appreciate their feedback and their investment in, in, in helping us move forward. And that's exactly what we're doing, Speaker. We're moving forward with a plan to implement plates that people will be proud of and confident in. Thank you. Member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question today is to our Premier, a man who is leading the way. Premier, the Ring of Fire represents an untold opportunity for economic greatness, not only for Northern Ontario, 
and First Nations communities, but for all of Ontario. Unfortunately, under the previous Liberal government, they wasted that potential with continued delays, inactions, and actual roadblocks to development. Major industry partners left this province literally saying they, don't, they didn't have hope for this project because of the impediments for success created by the previous government. Year after, after year, with announcements and reannouncements and reannouncements of reannouncements, the attempts of funding by the previous government were made. Yet no actual commitment to getting shovels into the ground. Mr. Speaker, could the Premier share with this legislature about the great news from our government regarding the new partnership agreement that we have secured for the Ring of Fire? Thank you. Premier. Well, I, want to, I want to thank our, our great member from Hastings, Lennox, Addington. What a, what a great announcement yesterday it was, uh, Mr. Speaker, for, for First Nations on Webaquay and, and Martin Falls. Both chiefs were there. That's the difference between our government and the previous government that couldn't get a deal done for over 15 years. The only, Mr. Speaker, the, the, only, the, the only deal they ended up getting done was with Bay Street, spent $20 million on, on lawyers, and the NDP backed that, of course. Order. Mr. Speaker, this is going to give an opportunity to two First Nations communities, along with many others, and the rest of Ontario. Official and opposition and come to order. And then, I apologize to the Premier for interrupting. Give them an Please opportunity. Continue. For, for better access to health care, so, so, social issues, uh, giving them opportunities for economic prosperity and growth. That's what we're looking forward to, Mr. Speaker. The supplementary question. Well, Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier once again. Premier, thank you for that. That's incredible news, and it's certainly worthy of acknowledgement. Yeah. I'm proud to be a part of this government that is finally helping to ensure our province is once again working again and benefiting all Ontarians. Premier, during your press conference, Chief Cornelius Waboff from the Webaquay First Nation said it best about the potential that this deal represents when he said, we are looking forward to prosperity for our resource development in our area, and we are looking forward to working with Ontario and industry, as well as to be partners with them. We are looking forward to the prosperity and the benefits that will come from our land resources. Mr. Speaker, can the Premier please elaborate to the Legislature about the potential economic impact that Ontario could see from development in the Ring of Fire region in this province? Great question. Premier. Well, again, I want to, I want to thank the, the member for the question, Mr. Speaker. The First Nations communities from, from that area deserve to be finally part of economic su success in the province. Mr. Speaker, this is going to create up to 5,500 jobs annually, $9.4 billion in gross domestic product, $6.2 billion for Ontario's mining industry, $2 billion in government revenue divided between the federal government, provincial government, and, and the uh, municipal governments, along with First Nations community. This is one of the biggest announcements our government's ever made. This is an incredible opportunity, again, for First Nations communities right across this province because they know they have a government that can work with them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask the members to take their seats. Order. You can't heckle the press gallery. <laughs> And you can't reply. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Order. Please start the clock. The next question, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Wait times for mental health and and addiction support in Ontario have reached an all-time high. In fact, just last month, we found out that the wait times for children and youth have nearly doubled because of years of failed action from Liberal and Conservative governments. The Liberals let families down when it came to delivering mental health services for those in need. But instead of fixing the problem, this government has spent two years making empty promises. When will the Premier finally commit to matching this year's federal mental health investment of $232 million? 
Minister of Long-Term Care to reply. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you for that question. You know, I, I look at our Minister of Health and Addictions and uh, I, um, Addictions as well, and I say to myself, look at the good work that they're doing, the progress that we're making. I'm looking at the last 15 years of absolute neglect uh, in this whole sector, and so we have a, a, an amazing minister, an amazing associate minister of mental health, and I'm very pleased to say that that $3.8 billion that, that our government has committed to spending for mental health, uh, we are looking at ways to keep our youth uh, supported across uh, the sector. We made new investments in services and supports designed specifically for youth, including an additional $10 million in an annual funding for core child and youth mental health services, and we're making additional investment of nearly $40 million in targeted mental health for students. Response. And we have provided $6 million in intensive services, another million dollars for new provincial eating disorder prevention, $3.3 million over four years. So we are making— Thank you. The supplementary question. What the minister has failed to mention is that this government has put exactly zero dollars of provincial funds into mental health and addictions. Back to the Premier, it seems that this government has forgotten also the deep government's cuts the that the government's made to mental health and addiction services. One of the first things the government did was to cut $330 million from mental health and addictions, of which $69 million was for children and youth in crisis. Now we have ballooning wait lists for people to receive mental health services. Speaker, our kids deserve so much better than a premier who cuts programs and services that the kids rely on. Premier, why is your government's priorities focused on taking away services from Ontarians? Minister. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you again for the question. I can tell you legitimately all my experience in health care for 30 years. This is the first government that has prioritized <laughs> mental health, the very first one. The very first one. As I said, the historic $3.8 billion over 10 years, the Mental Health and Addiction Centre for Excellence, uh, uh, the additional $10 million an annual funding for core services, $3.5 million for psychosis intervention service, the list goes on and on. Our government is making real progress, Order. taking real action, putting our most vulnerable people at their most vulnerable time under our focus. Our government is taking swift action to make sure that the mental health and addiction issues across Ontario that were pervasive under the previous government, you watched it build, Response. you watched it happen. Our government is dealing with that reality, and we are making progress every day. Restart the clock. The next question, the member for Lanark. Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier, but first I'd like to just congratulate the Premier on signing the deal with the Ring of Fire yesterday. Long overdue. The speaker, for the last two years, the Lanark County OPP have benefited from a mobile crisis response team. This funded a full-time mental health nurse to be a first responder alongside the OPP. The data is irrefutable early intervention works. Lanark County Situation Table, which deals with individuals in crisis, has reported a 45 per cent drop in referrals as a result of this pilot. But now the funding for the program has been cut, and I understand no evaluation of the program was ever undertaken. This program reduced pressures on our hospitals and our courts by solving problems before they became a crisis. Question. Speaker, will the Premier reconsider this poor decision? The government to respond. I recognize the Solicitor General. Thank you. We're both very anxious to answer it because it is a government-wide issue that we're dealing with. I'm sure the member opposite appreciates and understands that while we do not make uh, operational decisions on uh, how OPP uh, distribute their assets and resources, uh, there is no doubt that situation tables and uh, mental health workers embedded with uh, police has been a very effective tool. Um, I have seen firsthand how situation tables can actually get the individuals who need the services uh, quickly within their communities. Uh, but again, operationally, decisions made on where assets and resources should be deployed within the OPP are left to the Commissioner. Thank you, Speaker. 
The supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, let's not deflect from the question. It was the Solicitor General who eliminated the program. This was not an OPP decision. It's rare that we see success with such a program in such a short period of time. The MCRT has improved communications and the sharing of resources between our service providers and our agencies. It has eased pressure on the police, who don't have the specialized training in mental health and ought not to be expected to be mental health professionals. Early intervention has reduced those pressures on our hospitals and our courts. It was a win-win for everyone. But the Solicitor General did not even evaluate the outcomes before making the decision to cut and eliminate all funding. I'm calling on the Premier to review the details of this program Shit. and its success and then direct the appropriate ministers to reinstate funding. Thank you. The Solicitor General to reply. So to be clear, 40 percent of frontline police officers work today in the province of Ontario, across Ontario, involve individuals who are in crisis with mental health. It is, frankly, why our government has such a government-wide focus on actually getting the services where they need to be across Ontario. The operational decisions are made by the commissioner and his team. What we are doing at government Order. wide is to make investments that actually impact individual lives, and those investments continue to happen through the Minister of Health, through the Associate Minister of Health, and across government. Thank you, Speaker. The next question is a government question. Member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Associate Minister of Children and Women's Issues. Speaker, we know that women across Ontario are consistently underrepresented in managerial and executive positions. On the TSX listed issuers board seats, women only hold 15%. Increasing the number of women on boards and in senior management positions is good for the economy good for the business and critical for gender diversity. Can the minister please explain to the House why it is important to support women as they pursue leadership roles and what is she doing to achieve this? Question. The Associate Minister of Children and Women's Issues. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Richmond Hill for such an important question. Speaker, one of my top priorities as a Minister of Women and Children's Issues is to look at how our government can support the economic empowerment of women. Last week, I had the opportunity with the member from Flamborough Glanbrook to visit Susan Gubusta's auto dealership in Mississauga. Susan is the first female president of the Canadian International Auto Show. She looks to hire women at her dealership and mentor them in the auto sector. Susan is just one of the many examples of women in leadership roles who are mentoring and leading the next generation of women and girls who are looking to start their own businesses or move up into leadership roles. I am proud to say our government is funding projects that provide skills, knowledge and experience to women to increase their economic security. This year alone, our government is investing $4.7 million Response. into the Women's Economic Security Program and $2.1 million in the Investing in Women's Futures programs, because when women in our society and economy succeed, we are all stronger. The supplementary question. Thank you, Minister. This is encouraging. Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for that answer. Speaker, I'm proud. The business owner, I know there are many other female entrepreneurs in my riding in Richmond Hill. Minister, I have meet, met with many small business owners who have told me that they are ignored by the previous government. One thing I notice in meeting with these small business owners is that they are, many of them are men. In fact, today women only make up of a fraction of the business owners in Ontario. Minister, what is your ministry doing to help female entrepreneurs start, grow, and run their own businesses? The Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Production. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member for Richmond Hill for that uh, question. Our government is committed to making Ontario a competitive business environment that helps small businesses achieve their potential and grow jobs. 
But in order for Ontario to live up to its fullest potential, we need to empower all of the talent and skill that makes Ontario such a great place to live, work and play. Supporting female entrepreneurs to start and grow their business is a key part to this vision. This is one reason our government launched the Small Business Success Strategy to help better support small businesses and understand the unique challenges facing entrepreneurs in this province. I am looking forward to joining the Associate Minister of Children and Women's Issues to ensure female entrepreneurs Response. are key players in moulding Ontario's small business success strategy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'll government will continue to make Ontario more competitive and build on Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Toronto, St. Paul. Good morning, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. On Friday, the minister received the final report from the Peel District School Board Review, a review that was meant to address anti-black racism across Peel schools. Though the minister did not immediately make the review public, students, parents, educators, education workers, student support workers across Peel District already had cause for concern. In December, the reviewer stated, quote, community members, particularly in the black communities, have expressed concern about the review process and that the review, quote, may not satisfy the desire within the community for deeper and more thorough consultations. Premier, how many of the review's recommendations deal specifically with anti-black racism, and how many of your Question. minister's ministerial recommendations will specifically address anti-black racism? Thank you. The government house leader. Why? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the minister, as you know, uh, took uh, a leadership role on, on this uh, very early on. I know he reached out to uh, uh, the members of, uh, uh, of uh, this legislature from, uh, from Peel Region uh, in advance uh, of the review. There's a lot of good work that has been done, but obviously we'll review any of the recommendations that come forward and be sure to uh, not only work uh, with the legislature but for members on all, all sides. Uh, I, I know that all members on both sides of the House uh, uh, deplore uh, uh, any act uh, of racism, and we will do our best always to make sure that that's uh, not the case in any one of our schools. Uh, I thank the honourable member for a question, but we'll, we have a lot of work to do, and we'll get it done. A supplementary question, the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and back to the Premier. Mr. Speaker, this government is failing black youth. Students have raised concerns about anti-black racism in Hamilton-Wentworth District School Board and the Toronto District School Board. The review under the Liberals did not address the root causes of anti-black racism in the York Region District School Board because I've heard from them too. High school students across Kitchener Centre and Kitchener Conestoga talk about an N-word pass that allows students to use the N-word at their schools liberally and without consequence. Yeah. Students are desperate to address racism in schools. What conversations has the Minister of Education had with the Solicitor General, who's responsible for anti-racism strategies in Ontario, regarding the creation of an anti-racism strategy in education, and when will this strategy be released? Again, the government has to uh, Again, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 uh... I appreciate the questions uh, from the members opposite, but as I said, uh, uh, the minister, uh, uh, Minister Lecce, took a leadership role on this as soon as uh, we were made, made aware of the situation. I applaud members on both sides of the House uh, 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 for helping us take action on this. This is something that I'm sure that we all understand is completely unacceptable, not only in our schools, but across the province. And that's why we will redouble our efforts to make sure that in our schools, our schools are safe uh, for everybody, Mr. Speaker. As I said, we'll take a look at the recommendations and we'll be sure to report back in a very fulsome way to this legislature on the next steps. Thank you. The next question, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Speaker, yesterday the Premier told the media, and I quote, you keep pounding on the little things. Speaker, if you can't get a 12 by 6 piece of metal right, how can anyone have confidence that you'll get the big things right? And speaker, speaking of big things, in his last response to me, the Order. Premier cited a $15 billion deficit. And I think the Premier must have forgotten that the last time he did that here, Government side the Auditor General publicly corrected him on his misuse of that number. 
a number he is using as a context for making class sizes larger and cutting support for vulnerable learners. Speaker, can the Premier explain why he and his caucus continue to use this number? Government House Leader to reply on behalf of the government. I, uh, I appreciate the awkward situation the member opposite has been put in, Mr. Speaker. He's, uh, he's been asked to account for 15 years of Liberal failure, uh, uh, and, uh, and I know that this is the last week of him being a, a leader of the party, and I know he's probably anxious to hand over that mantle to, uh, to somebody else. We use the $15 billion number because that's the number, Mr. Speaker. You don't have to ask Ontarians. They understand what happened during the previous Liberal government. They spent money like it was going out of style. They had no accountability on anything. When it comes to education, Mr. Speaker, yes, they spent a lot of money, but our kids, they didn't receive the benefits of that money. They had no accountability. And when I said yesterday, a proliferation of private, uh, uh, a private uh, schools of, uh, of tutoring all across the province, why? It's a legacy of what they have done. They failed parents. Response. They failed our teachers. They failed our education system. We won't. The supplementary question. Speaker, that was just a bunch of horse feathers. So, Speaker, people in Ontario are genuinely, side, come concerned, are genuinely concerned, and each time the Premier uses that number, he loses credibility. Speaker, I can't really understand. After the Auditor General schooled him in public, the FAO told him, the public accounts told him that he continues to do this. Why his caucus continues to do this? And, Speaker, here's why. The Premier is creating a context for cuts, cuts to things that families depend on, making class sizes larger, less support Government for vulnerable side learners, order. cutting services for the developing disabled, making a order. mess of the Ontario order. Autism Program. The member for Northumberland, Peterborough South, come to order. using it as a context to cut public health at a time when we can The Associate Minister of Energy, come to Speaker, order. Speaker, through you, can the Premier explain to Ontario families why he continues to cut those things that families depend on? No Order. Government House Leader to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member opposite has absolutely no credibility in anything that he just said there. This government, since day one, this, since day one, this government has been focused on three areas. Progress, growth, and prosperity. Progress on education, our math scores, Mr. Speaker. Progress on transit and transportation, Mr. Speaker. Progress on balancing the budget while removing the lowest income earners from the tax rolls altogether. Progress on long-term care, Mr. Speaker. And what does that lead to? It leads to growth, an economy that is growing each and every month that we have been in office, Mr. Speaker. And you know what that leads to? It leads to prosperity, prosperity that comes when over 300,000 people have the dignity of a job and can pay their bills, Mr. Speaker. We'll continue on this agenda of growth, prosperity and progress, Mr. Speaker, and we'll let them account Response. for the disaster they left this province in. But the people of Ontario need no lesson from them. Ask the government side to come to order so that we can hear the next question. I think he might want to get a chance to ask his question too. Start the clock. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Speaker, our government has been clear that we support greater mental health supports for the people in Ontario. We're listening and we're taking steps to address the many problems people face. In doing so, we recognize, Speaker, that everyone is unique in the issues they face. And farmers, Speaker, are no different. I know that the minister has been vocal about the many issues farmers and farm families in Ontario face. Will the minister please tell us about some of those issues? Minister of Agriculture, Food thank and Rural Affairs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member from Whitby for the excellent question. It's something that we don't often think about, but it's always present. Farmers face unique challenges every day, and unfortunately, those come with their own struggles with mental health. Mr. Speaker, mental health is health. 
If everyone is unique, farmers are no different. They often deal with unpredictable and difficult crop conditions. Social isolation, heavy workloads, farm trespassers, fluctuating markets and pricing, burdensome regulations, and are anxious about what may come tomorrow. When we speak about mental health, it's important that farmers be part of the conversation so that we can all provide support and our assistance. Here, here. Supplementary question. Thank you, Minister, for that response. Speaker, it's encouraging to all of us here who have farmers in their riding to hear such words. Many of us have heard about farmers struggling with the difficulties of the occupation and the many uncertainties it brings. Speaker, it's important that we take action. And our government has made it clear that we're taking mental health seriously. And we've made it clear that we're listening to the voice of Ontario's farmers and rural communities. Would the minister please tell us more about what our government is doing for farmers' mental health? Mr. Mayor, Culture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thank the member again for that great supplementary question. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and thank the member. Um, as I said, I led a series of roundtables with agriculture communities to learn more about their challenges. We're committed resources for mental health supports of, to our agriculture communities. We're providing funding for research projects to develop mental health literacy and emergency response for Ontario agriculture. Our government supports Ontario 211, a telephone helpline and website that provides information and mental health supports. And we have tabled Bill 156, which, if passed, will give farmers peace of mind as they prevent farm, farm trespassing. Mr. Speaker, we heard rural Ontario, and we are taking action. The next question, the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My uh, question is to the Premier. The Hamilton Transportation Task Force that the Premier appointed will soon report on its recommendations. So my question to the Premier is a very simple one. If the task force recommends that the Hamilton LRT project continue, will the Premier, in fact, come to the table to get that project here, back here. on track? Here, here. Minister of Transportation, to reply Thank on behalf you, Mr. Of the Speaker. Well, as the Leader of the Opposition knows, our government has committed a billion dollars of new funding to the City of Hamilton. Unfortunately, the previous Liberal government was not upfront about the cost of the Hamilton LRT. Everyone believed that the cost of the Hamilton LRT was going to be $1 billion, which is why our government committed a billion to that project. Mr. Speaker, we have been clear. We struck a task force. The task force is, is comprised of credible individuals led by the Honourable Tony Valeri, a formal, former Liberal Member of Parliament and Minister of Transport. They are doing their work. And when, they, when, they are, when they've completed their work, they're going to provide the government with a series of recommendations. I look forward to receiving those recommendations and then moving forward on getting that money invested in the city of Hamilton. question. Well, Speaker, it's unfortunate that the government decided to fudge around with the numbers and not treat Hamilton the same way as they treated all other transit projects. In okay, I'm going to, going to ask the uh, order. I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition to withdraw the unparliamentary comment. The bottom line is that the um, justification that the province used to cancel the LRT in Hamilton uh, didn't uh, meet um, the requirements of other projects that had been approved in the province of Ontario. Before wasting hundreds of millions of public dollars, the Premier needs to make sure that he has explored all options to keep the Hamilton LRT in track. So far, he's failed to do that, but it's not too late. If the federal government is willing to come to the table uh, and the task force does recommend this transit project. Will the Premier recommit the funding to the Hamilton LRT? Minister of Transportation. Let me be clear, Mr. Speaker. In 2018, our government said that we were going to give a billion dollars to the City of Hamilton. In 2019, we said we were going to give a billion dollars to the City of Hamilton. And today, in 2020, we are still committed to a billion dollars to the City of Hamilton. that led the people of Ham Hamilton to believe that the cost of the LRT was going to be a billion dollars when they knew, Mr. Speaker, that it would not order. be. Opposition we come have to order. been very clear with the Minister people of, Labor of the City of order. Hamilton. We know that they need transit and transportation Member for Waterloo come to order. Hamilton East Stony Creek come to order. We have asked the task force to put together a list of needed transit and transportation options for people in Hamilton. We look forward to receiving that report and working with people in 
Hamilton get that money invested Absolutely. as quickly Absolutely. as possible. Wow. The next question, the member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Transportation. Our government has been clear in our commitment of improving the safety and efficiency of Ontario's transportation network, and I know the minister has been diligently working towards this. We understand the importance of strengthening connections between individuals, families, and businesses in southwestern Ontario. Speaker, in January, the minister traveled to London to announce the release of our government's first regional transportation plan. Speaker, can the minister tell us about the contents of Connecting the Southwest? Here, here. The Minister of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member from Chatham-Kent for the excellent question. After 15 years of Liberal government that only focused on connecting places like London and Windsor to the GTA, we have taken a different approach. Our plan outlines real practical transportation improvements that better connect our cities, our towns and villages and hamlets in a way that will preserve jobs and attract future investment. Connecting the Southwest has over 40 actions and commitments for improving existing rail corridors, highway networks and inter-community bus service across the region. And just last week, Mr. Speaker, our government announced that the province is proceeding with an expression of interest to procure a contractor to widen and install concrete median barriers along Highway 401 between Tilbury and London, a key commitment Spons. that our government is keeping. Mr. Speaker, our, people, our, our government is listening to the people of southwestern Ontario, and I look forward to sharing. Thank you very much. The supplementary question. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Spe uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for that answer. Boy, if I had a million dollars, <laughs> we know we, uh, maybe a billion dollars. We know the people of southwestern Ontario take pride in their communities, and our government wants to see these communities flourish as much as they do. Connecting the southwest is an important step forward, and I'm thrilled that our government is carrying out this commitment for southwestern Ontarians. This region is home to more than 1.6 million people and will only experience more growth from here. Speaker, can the minister share what connecting the southwest means for the people of this region? Oh, yeah. Minister of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, our government wants to encourage more growth in southwestern Ontario, and we know that our plan will help sustain an open-for-business environment in the region. After we released our draft plan, the Ontario Trucking Association said this, and I quote, The Ford government has shown strong support for our sector. Our industry and, by extension, the province of Ontario will be more competitive through the execution of this effort, unquote. Speaker, I want to remind Ontarians to participate in our online survey, which is open until March 17. Our consultations, consultations will help inform our next steps moving forward to ensure that we meet the needs, the transportation needs, of the people of southwestern Ontario. Thank you. The next question, the member for Kiwetanong. Good morning, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Yesterday, the Premier and Minister for Energy uh, Northern Development and Mines made us a familiar sounding announcement uh, about road access to the Ring of Fire. Agreements for all season roads with these communities existed for three years, but Ontario delayed the existing working relationship with all First Nations across the region by terminating the regional framework agreement. Uh, that was a step backwards that further delayed the infrastructure needed for the Ring of Fire development. Can you tell me how ripping up previous agreements, then coming back to essentially the same agreements, is progress? <laughs> to reply on behalf of the government, I recognize the Premier. I want to thank uh, my friend from uh, across the aisle. I, I think, and we, we have a great relationship, by the way, Mr. Premier, and we, we really do, probably better than the leader. But uh, over there. But anyways, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, um, my friend across the aisle there 
knows knows this is probably one of the largest announcements, biggest announcements this province has ever had for First Nations communities. Because again, it shows that we can work with First Nations. This is a multi, multi-billion dollar opportunity. Again, not, not just for the, the two First Nations community up there, but First Nations communities right across this great province. We're going to be working with them shoulder to shoulder, standing up, making sure that we get a road to prosperity built and give them a better opportunity, again, for, for economic development, for emergency services along, Mr. Speaker, making sure that they prosper like the rest of the province is prospering. Supplementary question. We have to we have to understand development in the far north does not happen without free, prior, and informed consent of all communities affected. Yesterday, the minister said, "Success is when indigenous communities are ready to move forward and show leadership. Show leadership by saying out loud, we want to move forward, move at a speed of business. But community decisions don't." and shouldn't happen at the speed of business. How will, Ontario make, how will Ontario make sure that First Nations who are not ready to move at the speed of business are heard and accommodated? The Associate Minister of Energy to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Under the former Liberal government, there was a decade of talk and more than $20 million spent and still no shovels in the ground, Mr. Speaker. I want to commend Minister Rickford and the Premier yesterday for the agreement that they signed with the First Nations partners on an agreement to move forward with a corridor to prosperity. We welcome proximal First Nations communities to enter into an agreement to unlock the incredible economic opportunities in Ontario's north for the people of the north and the great province of Ontario. This is about more than just a road, Mr. Speaker. It's a corridor to prosperity that will improve the quality of life for First Nations communities by providing better access to economic opportunities, health care, education, and housing supports. And we're proud to support our First Nations in our north, Mr. Speaker. The next question, the member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the outstanding Minister for Seniors and Accessibility. Recently, you announced that our government's plan to improve accessibility and make a positive difference in the lives of 2.6 million people with disabilities in Ontario. Can you please share with the House what the government is doing to advance accessibility and inclusion in our beautiful province? The Minister for Seniors and Accessibility. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for raising very important question. On January 28th, I proudly announced our government's framework, advancing accessibility in Ontario. Yeah. This, this framework helps to build more inclusive and accessible Ontario. Our plan focuses on four key areas, breaking down barriers in built environment, government leading by examples, Improving understanding, awareness about accessibility, increasing participation in the economy of, for people with a disability. These areas were informed by the recommendation made Spons. by the Honourable David only in the third review, AODA, as well as input from key partners and people with a disability. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to hear about the great work the minister is doing to improve accessibility for all in this province. As well, I would like to thank him in advance for coming out to our blind hockey game tomorrow night in Mississauga Lakeshore. For the first time, we're going to have a blind hockey team playing in Mississauga. <laughs> Making Ontario accessible is a journey, and when communities and businesses are accessible for everyone, it benefits us all. Speaker, can the minister share what are we as a government doing to keep driving towards that goal? Can the minister give examples on how our government is leading by example to make our province more accessible and more inclusive? Good question. Minister, reply. Thank you again for the great question. The government will lead by example, in this role as policymaker, service provider, and employer, 
Our government, under the leadership of the Premier Doug Ford, has shown that accessibility is a priority by creating a dedicated standalone ministry entirely focused on making a more accessible, inclusive Ontario. Another example is how we will be leading by example is by applying an accessible lens when evaluating capital project applications and spending tax dollars. We are working towards a more Response. accessible and inclusive province today and for our future generation. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the clock. Order. Restart the clock. The next question, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. On February 5th, myself and my fellow members from Niagara attended a mental health roundtable put on by the Minister of Health and Addictions. The roundtable was a result of my meeting between myself, the Minister, on the overwhelming need for increased supports to frontline staff who are battling the mental health and addiction crisis in Niagara. While I'm glad he came, I hope the roundtable showed him how quickly we need him to act. On December 6, 2018, this House, including the Minister's party, unanimously supported my motion to create 24-7 mental health drop-in centres for Niagara. So why was this commitment ignored in today's announcements? I recognize the Minister of Long-Term Care to thank respond you, Speaker, on behalf of the Speaker, and again, thank you to the member for the question. Uh, as I said earlier, our government is spending $3.8 billion on mental health and addictions. It is the first time this level of commitment has ever been made. Our, uh, our government is very proud to launch the Roadmap to Wellness, a plan to build Ontario's mental health and addiction system. I know the Associate Minister of, of uh, Mental Health and Addictions is extremely dedicated to this area, and this announcement follows extensive engagement with experts, grassroots organizations, health care providers on the front lines, and first responders, as well as people with lived experience. And my heart goes out to everyone who is suffering with mental health issues, who deserves to get the care they need when they need it. And that's exactly Response. what our government is doing. The neglect of the previous government over 15 years will not be undone in a day or a month. But we are dedicated absolutely to making sure that we have a plan to move forward, make sure that people can get the care they need. Thank you very much. <laughs> supplementary question. Thank you. And back to the Premier. People in Niagara are dying. Right. Today, they're dying, and they're dying in Niagara West, who's a member from Niagara West on your side of the house. In Niagara, we lose. Think about this. We're losing to suicide one every seven days. Upwards of 70 percent of our calls to police and first responders received are to mental health crisis, preventive supports, and supports for family members helping their loved ones are stretched thin. Even worse, after 9 o'clock at night, there's almost nowhere for them to go who are in crisis except our hospital. My motion, my motion would have addressed this need by allocating 0.002% of the provincial budget to three 24 drop-in centres across Niagara. So again, Premier, where people are dying in Niagara, Question. why did you ignore the commitment your government made to the people of Niagara? long-term care to respond thank you speaker and and thank you for that question it's a very important question to ask how are our Ontarians going to get the health care and the mental health that they need every year and I want to acknowledge 1.4 million Ontarians experience a mental health or addictions challenge and that has a serious impact on their quality of life including their ability to go to school or make a living I'd like to point out that our government is launching mindability a new first-of-its-kind program in Canada that will provide evidence-based cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. And through MindAbility, an individual will receive an assessment from a trained mental health clinician and be offered a therapy program that addresses their needs. 
Services will include internet-based internet modules, personal workbooks, telephone Response. coaching, but most of all, they will be able to get the care that they need when they need it. Our government is proud to present this program. Thank you. Next question, the member for Whitby. Uh, to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. <laughs> Speaker, we've all been hearing for some time now that farmers are dealing with the issue of on-farm trespassing. We trust our farmers every day to provide us with safe and healthy food. And yet, Speaker, farmers are feeling unsafe in their own homes and on their farms. I can imagine that farmers were very happy when our government tabled Bill 156 sure to deal with this issue. Would the minister please tell us more about this proposed legislation and how it helps farmers? Why the NDP oppose it? Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Well, thank you very much again, Mr. Speaker, and to the member from Whitby for the, uh, for the great question. I think I can fairly say that members in this chamber who have farms in the riding have encountered or heard about the issues farmers face. What's clear to me, Mr. Speaker, is that we owe it to our farmers, our food processors, to make them feel safe and support them in the great work that they do feeding our province. That's why we put forward legislation that will address that issue. Bill 156, Security from Trespass and Protecting Food Safety, if passed, will ba balance the right of the safety of our food, the safety of our farmers, and the right of people to protest. We've had a number of um, hours of debate on that bill here in the House, and I have every confidence when it passes, it will do that and, and provide that safety for our food and our producers. Here, here. Here, here. Supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and back uh, to the Minister. Speaker, since the tabling of le legislation, we've heard from farmers and they're thrilled. I understand that a few weeks ago, the Minister went out to tour the province to hear more from farmers, to see how they feel about the legislation and whether it addresses the concerns they've had for some time now. Speaker, can the Minister please tell us more about some of the things he's heard on this important tour? Again, the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Thanks again, Mr. Speaker, and to the member. A few weeks ago, I travelled across the province holding roundtables with many of my colleagues here in the chamber to get a better understanding of how farmers feel about our legislation and to see what sorts of issues they are facing. These farmers who know what it means to have someone walk onto their property, interact with their animals, and know that there is nothing that they can do about it. I'm happy to say that across the province, farmers are thrilled that our government has put this forward. Yeah. One thing is clear, Mr. Speaker, our government is one that is listening to rural Ontario. We're listening to Ontario's farmers, and we will continue to do so. Thank you. That concludes our question period for this morning. Pursuant to Standing Order 36A, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Solicitor General concerning mobile crisis response teams. This matter will be debated at 6 p.m. today. Pursuant to Standing Order 36A, the member for Toronto St. Paul's has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to her question given by the Government House Leader concerning anti-black racism strategy in education. This matter will be debated today at 6 p.m. We have a deferred vote on a motion for closure on the motion for second reading of Bill 171, an act to enact the Building Transit Faster Act 2020 and make related amendments to other acts. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bill.
and ask the members to please take their seats. February 24, 2020, Ms. Mulrooney moved second reading of Bill 171, an act to enact the Building Transit Faster Act 2020 and make related amendments to other acts. Mr. Calandra has moved that the question now be put. All those in favour of Mr. Calandra's motion, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Mulrooney. Ms. Mulrooney. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Calandra. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Bethlehem Falvey. Mr. Bethlehem Falvey. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Smith Bay of Quincy. Mr. Smith Bay of Quincy. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Sermon. Mr. Sermon. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Mr. Kanji. Mr. Kanji. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Pettipiece. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Parsa. Mr. Parsa. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Ostroff. Mr. Ostroff. Mr. Tanny Gas. Mr. Tanny Gas. Mr. Baber. Mr. Baber. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Kara Holly. Mrs. Kara Holly. Mr. Gazzetto. Mr. Gazzetto. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Ms. Trianta Filopoulos. Trianta Filopoulos. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Cram. Mr. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Mr. Smith Peterborough Court. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Anon. Mr. Anon. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Mr. Kanapati. Mr. Kanapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by. Ms. Shubi Song. Ms. Shubi Song. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Van Tuff. Mr. Van Tuff. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Tavis. Mr. Tavis. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Ms. Begum. Ms. Begum. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Stiles. Ms. Stiles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Burns McGowan. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Rokosovic. Mr. Harden. Mr. Harden. Mr. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Assange. Mr. Assange. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Hilliard. The ayes are 62, the nays are 39. The ayes being 62 and the nays being 39, I declare the motion carried. <laughs> Ms. Mulrooney has moved second reading of Bill 171, an act to enact the Building Transit Faster Act 2020 and make related amendments to other acts. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? No. Votes and notes. All those in favour of the motion will please say aye. aye. Those opposed will please say nay. nay. In my opinion, the ayes have it. Call in the members. This will be another five-minute bill. Moved second reading of Bill 171, an act to enact the Building Transit Faster Act 2020 and make related amendments to other acts. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Mulroney. Ms. Mulroney. 
Mr. Uri. Mr. Uri. Mr. Kalam. Mr. Kalam. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Bethan Falvey. Mr. Bethan Falvey. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Smith Bay Quinty. Mr. Smith Bay Quinty. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Fullerton. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Ms. Serma. Ms. Serma. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Coe. Mr. Coe. Ms. Kanji. Ms. Kanji. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Pettipee. Mr. Pettipee. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Parson. Mr. Parson. Ms. Skelly. Ms. Skelly. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Pacini. Mr. Miller Perry Sound. Miller Perry Sound. Mr. Miller Perry Sound. Skoka. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Ostra. Mr. Tanny Gas. Mr. Tanny Gas. Mr. Babbitt. Mr. Babbitt. Ms. Hoga. Ms. Hoga. Ms. Kusindo. Ms. Kusindo. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Tang. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Carahollis. Mrs. Carahollis. Mr. Gazetto. Mr. Gazetto. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Ms. Trianta Falopo. Mr. Trianta Falopo. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Cram. Mr. Cram. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Bauman. Mr. Smith. Peter Burkworth. Mr. Smith. Peter Burkworth. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Sandy. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Ms. Gamar. Ms. Gamar. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. The post of the motion will please rise one at a time and be counted by the clerk. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Madame Jellin. Madame Jellin. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Singh Branton Center. Ms. Singh Branton Center. Mr. Vantos. Mr. Vantos. Ms. Should be Song. Should be Song. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Tavins. Mr. Tavins. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Ms. Bagel. Ms. Bagel. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Miller Hamilton East. Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrews. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morrison. Ms. Morrison. Mr. Ocosa. Mr. Ocosa. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Hardin. Mr. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Monteith Farrell. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. The ayes are 63, the nays are 38. The ayes being 63 and the nays being 38, I declare the motion carried. <laughs> Shall the bill be ordered for third reading? Yeah. If somebody has to stand up. Now. Which committee? Committee on Social Policy. Right. Committee on Social Policy. And then we're done. Pursuant to Standing Order 36A, the member for Ottawa South has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Government House Leader concerning the public accounts. This matter, too, will be debated today at 6 p.m. Is, is it time for another one? No? Okay. Okay, this House is in recess until 3 p.m.